Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. It is April, which means it's once again Oral Cancer Awareness Month. Delivering a cancer diagnosis is absolutely the worst part of my job. I hate giving bad news and a cancer diagnosis comes with a lot of fear and uncertainty for patients. Oftentimes, my patients have a lot of questions about what is to come and what to expect that I just don't know the answer to. In today's video, I sit down with Brittany Ball, who is the physician's assistant for the two head and neck oncologic surgeons that I work closely with. She helps these surgeons care for our patients with cancer and helps coordinate every step along the way. I wanted to get her take as to what patients can expect after, after they receive a cancer diagnosis. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and Brittany's alone, and they do not represent any organization that may employ either myself or her, or that we may belong to. And that this video is for educational purposes only, and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. Also, please know that every case is different. So it's really important that if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, that you have a conversation with a head and neck oncologic surgeon or cancer specialist. With that being said, let's learn more from Brittany. So we are here with Brittany Ball, who is a PA in our division of oral surgery. And she works very closely with our two oncologic head and neck surgeons who work with our patients who are diagnosed with cancer. So thank you for being with us. And uh, I was hoping that you could share what patients can expect uh, in their first meeting with an oncologic surgeon after they receive a cancer diagnosis. Sure, thanks for having me on Dr. Roth. Um, so after you get a cancer diagnosis, it can be very confusing and scary and it's a long process from the day you get diagnosed until your treatment date and even afterwards. So on your first visit, we like to go over the diagnosis. We'll explain all about the diagnosis that you've received. You can ask as many questions as you'd like. You'll meet with your surgeon who specializes in head and neck surgery as well as the rest of the care team, including me, the uh, other residents, everyone who's involved in your care from getting pre-surgical testing up through until your surgery. Um, usually what we will do is go over your pathology um, and then we will order some imaging studies. So not for every diagnosis, but for most, if not almost every single diagnosis, we like to get imaging, which helps with staging your cancer. Different cancers have different staging, and in order to stage the cancer, we usually get um, imaging. That might be a PET scan, that might be a, just a CT scan. It depends, but we can go over all of that with you when you come into uh, your first appointment with us. There's nothing invasive that we do at these appointments. It's just to talk and explain the diagnosis. What is one question that you think uh, a patient should ask? Sure, so um, definitely a good question to ask is uh, usually we go over the surgical procedure because for a lot of the uh, cancer diagnoses, the first line of treatment um, is surgery, um, along with, in some cases, um, radiation therapy and or chemotherapy, depending on um, the final pathology that we receive, which usually comes in after you have your surgery. But a good thing to ask the surgeon is if there's any um, alternative route of treatment, if anything needs to be done before your surgery, um, just for your own information um, to go over that with the surgeon. That's a great question to ask. Perfect. And do you have any advice or final thoughts for someone uh, that might have just received a cancer diagnosis and doesn't know what to expect? Um, sure. It, like I said before, it's very confusing um, and it's a very scary time. So. Um, usually we try to do as much as we can with giving you know ample support and you know people that you can reach out to if you're confused along the way um, but it's really good to have a support system uh, with you throughout all of this sometimes it's very helpful to have family members come with you to the appointment um, a lot of times 
you know, we say patients only really absorb about 30% of what they're told at these appointments because it's such a big appointment. So um, bring a family member with you. They're more than welcome to come in with you. Bring a pen, paper, anything that helps you to retain the information so you can digest it when you go home and discuss it with, with the rest of your family and always, of course, reach out to us with any questions that you may have. Great. What, what are some of your favorite resources that you could share? I, I actually have some printed material with an organization called um, Cancer Care and I actually do a walk with them every year. Um, they have a lot of information on oral cancer as well as other cancers, but specifically for you know oral cancer. I have some printed material that I do give out to patients. They have a website um, and it's not just clinical information, it's support group information. Um, a lot of patients need other therapies that go along with our surgeries, um, including speech therapies, physical therapy. Um, so there's a lot of resources on things like that, including support groups with other patients who have undergone the same type of surgery and procedures. And it's really helpful to have a group to discuss these things with who understand what you've been going through. Great, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me, Dr. Roth. Thanks again to Brittany Ball for taking the time to provide her insights with us regarding what comes after an oral cancer diagnosis, and also for everything that she does for our patients with cancer. I've linked the resources that she discussed in the description below. If you want to check out more of my Oral Cancer Awareness Month videos, I put them in a convenient playlist, which I'll also link in the description. I hope that you found this video helpful and that you consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already so that we can reach as many people as possible and hopefully this will help someone. Thanks again for watching and be well.